Hi everyone, I'm Ian Lynch. I'm a proud member of the Canadian Kennel Club and the results for the Top Dogs 2021 have recently been released and I'm very lucky today to be with Gwen Haynes from Alberta. Her Rottweiler Lido is the number one obedience dog in the country. How does that feel, Gwen? Oh, how does that feel? Well, I, actually, I'm very honored and humbled actually that my dog, I never would have thought that I would ever have the number one obedience dog in Canada. First of all, A, I have a Rottweiler, which you don't normally see as the top dog. So um, I'm extremely proud of how he did in 2021. He's an amazing dog. Absolutely. He just seems amazing. Now let's go way, way, way back to the start. How did you get involved in dogs? Did you have dogs as a child? Did you get one as an adult? How did it all get started? Well, I've always been an avid animal person since I was a child. I wanted to be a vet when I grew up, but of course that didn't work out. But um, I have always had a dog, a family dog in the household, but I didn't really get into the purebred um, aspect of dogs until about 20 plus years ago. Mm -hmm. And I was given my first Rottweiler um, by the name of Logan and he started it all for me. So he is, he was the Rottweiler that made me switch completely to Rottweilers and understand that they're an exceptional working breed. And I knew when I had Logan that I had lightning in a bottle with him. Um, I was very fortunate with all the wonderful things that he achieved in his lifetime and um, on this planet, which was almost 15 years, which was kind of, um, it's kind of unheard of to have a Rottweiler live that long. But I knew when I had him that I wanted to have something from him to carry on with and hopefully one day have a dog that would be good enough to get a G-Motch and wow. be, of course, the number one dog in Canada. So that was amazing. It so yes, amazing. that's how it started for me. So Logan was your first Rottweiler. He's to blame for this whole love affair with the breed. Absolutely. And getting, is he yeah. also to blame for getting you involved in all this competitive yes. stuff as well? So yes. He, uh, he was an exceptional working dog. Uh, as well as being an exceptional working dog, he was also a beautiful um, specimen of a Rottweiler. Uh, he went on to get 45 uh, working titles behind his name, mostly in the advanced level. So he did everything from tracking to Schutzen to obedience, you name it, he did it all. But Keep in mind, he was my only dog at the time, so I had more than enough time to spend trying every performance event possible for him. Now that I, you know, fast forward 20 plus years, I have more than one dog. So it's really hard for me to kind of branch out into all the, the lovely things that I love to do with the Rottweiler. But yes, Logan indeed is the dog that got the itch for me for obedience. And um, yeah, like, as I said, he was an exceptional, beautiful dog as well. And he has multiple best in shows. He is a tracking, he was a tracking champion, an obedience champion, uh, American Canadian champion. So he was phenomenal. Um, as I said, lightning in a bottle for me. And I knew one day I wanted something that carried his pedigree because I knew the working ability and the health and the temperament was there for me as well. So he started it all for me. Yes, in 15 years, absolutely incredible. Now with Lido, your current Rottweiler, the number one uh, obedience dog in the country right now, what's his registered name? Can you tell everyone his registered name? I, every time you say number one dog, I always smile when you <laughs> say that. It's kind of, it's, it gives me goosebumps to think that I have that dog. But um, so, okay, so Logan, his registered name was um, Maple Moore's Are You The One? So uh, Lido, when he was born and I knew I was gonna keep him and he was gonna be that dog for me, his registered name is Tierney's betting on the one. So it's a play on Logan's name because he's also related to Logan. He's a grandson of Logan. So I just knew that if I bet on this dog, perhaps I could have that dog that would do it for me. And so I he's lived that. up to his name and, and then some. So I, I can't complain it. there. That worked out well. <laughs> you kind of manifested this with yes, that name. Exactly. I love it. I did. I did. Now, did this this star you live with, was he a star right away? Was it right yes. off the gate, he was just wonderful? Yeah. Were there no moments as a puppy that you were like, wow, this dog's got it? At about six weeks old, I noticed, I, I only had two puppies at that time. I had a boy and a girl. And I knew that we were going to keep a boy from this litter and the girl we were going to sell. Um, I loved them both equally, but there was something about Lido, and maybe it's because I was throwing all my eggs in one basket with respect to him. But at about six weeks old, he really showed me that he was going to be that dog. He was extremely biddable. He loved to play. He was very fast to learn things. He was just eager right from the get-go. And when I had him evaluated, the lady who evaluated him for me even turned to me and said, you're going to have your hands full with this boy. Uh, make sure he goes into the right home. And so, of course, I said, you know, I'm keeping him. So he's going to be in the right home for sure. And he's just been 
an amazing dog. Like I thought Logan was amazing. Lido, Lido is, Lido is very much as amazing as Logan was, um, with the exception that he he never likes to be wrong. He's always tries so hard to be right. And I just knew that this dog, if trained properly and I could harness that drive and that energy, I thought for sure he could go far. Absolutely. And he did. And you have gone far and you've had big success with Rottweilers. It was really great this year to uh, to see the list of the top obedience dogs because we had six of the seven groups in there. It wasn't just all golden retrievers. It was it was right. all sorts of dogs yeah. were represented, including terriers, including hounds. You know, it was really exciting. And we have a working dog as a number one dog. We've got the Rottweiler. In your opinion, Gwen, um, what's great about Rottweilers when it comes to obedience? And what can be a challenge with Rottweilers when it comes to competing in obedience with them? That's a really good question, actually. Um, I think for me, I can only speak for me and my experience with Rottweilers, but I think in general, knowing the breed, the challenges with respect to a Rottweiler is they do not handle the heat well at all. Um, they're a black dog. Uh, they seem to wilt whenever it gets about 20, 22 degrees. So I had to be extremely careful with respect to outdoor trials with um, any of my dogs. But when I was campaigning Lido last year, I knew that outdoor trials were going to be my nemesis. So I had to hope that utility and open would be done early in the morning. If it was outside, it wouldn't be too, too hot. So that is one of the huge challenges. And of course, the breed bias with respect to Rottweilers. Um, I'd like to think it's not out there, but it is. And uh, if you can have a dog in the top 10 even, or the top 50 for the country, and it being a Rottweiler, I think it says a lot for the ambassadorship of our breed, um, that they are a trainable and very talented dog. And hopefully with Lido being up there as number one, I hope it's changed some mindsets with respect to the breed. I think so. I think he makes them look very, very good and good on you yeah. for doing that as well. You were saying about um, the outdoor um, trials were difficult because of the heat. And of course, 2021 difficult in every aspect because yeah. of the COVID-19 pandemic. And so many events were outside for people and dogs alike. Were there any other challenges uh, in the year? You know, what, what a crazy year to win number one because there were so oh, many challenges. So many. Yeah, you know, I think my challenges were the same as everybody in 2021. You were hoping that the trials would go ahead. You were planning to attend the trials. You just crossed your fingers that there were no new COVID restrictions that were going to stop the trials from happening. So in 2020, and I mean, 2020 was a write-off, I think, for everybody. Mm -hmm. Lido was, I think, three when COVID hit. So he was at his height. And then there were no trials for two years. So my poor dog, who I really wanted to get all of this accomplished with, you know, getting a GMOTCH in itself is extremely difficult because you need 10 different judges. Um, you need to get those scores. So in 2021, the other challenge was is getting judges. So they weren't traveling. Um, you couldn't get judges from the States to come up. There were very few judges from even across Canada that were able to fly because flying was quite difficult. So that was another big challenge for us in 2021 was trying to find 10 different judges in trials that were somewhat local. Like I did go to one trial in BC, but hoping in Alberta, every time there was a trial, I kept looking at the judging panel going, please let there be judges I don't have. So as the stars lined up, it, the judges were great for um, 2021 for me. Every trial I went to, there was a new judge that I hadn't seen um, and that we trialed under. And the thing with Logan, or sorry, not Logan, Lido, that was exceptional was the fact that he was a consistent scoring dog. He would, if he was on and I had him in the right frame of mind, we qualified, we got our double, double scores that we needed. But plus you also have to score over 195 or higher um, uh, to get your GMOT. So, and Keep in mind, Alberta obedience competition, I think, is one of the toughest areas to be competing in. We have a high caliber of obedience dogs. And when I say high caliber, we're talking, you could have five people um, from one to five in a class with the, sc the lowest score being a 197. Mm -hmm. You know, so you had to be in that top of those classes because you needed a high trial. Um, so to get the points and all the stuff that Logan did for 2021 here in Alberta and a little bit in BC, was, I mean, phenomenal, the fact that he could keep going against such a high caliber. And they're all my my friends, and we're all competitors, but we all encourage everybody. And it was really wonderful to see in 2021 the camaraderie and everybody's roots for everybody. So as much as it's tough in Alberta, we are there for each other. That obedience circle is small, but big hearts. So I was very 
I, I felt embraced by the obedience community within Alberta. So I, I felt I felt very humbled that uh, we were given the accolades that we were given. It's so it's so kind to hear that. And what a nice shout out that is to all your friends. I'm always moved by the way performance competitors cheer each other on. And it's really inspiring, I think, for the rest of the fancy. So yes. thank you very much for saying that. Now, it was a year that you'll never forget because it was this am it, amazing year. And, you know, it's going to be it's so big for Lido as well. Was there one event or one moment in an event that stands out to you when you think of 2021? Absolutely. Without a doubt, the day that he got his GMOCH. So that was at the CKOC trial in the fall. Um, and we were under, I believe, um, MJ, uh, uh, oh gosh, her name is, is escaping me at the moment. I wish I'd written it down. But she is from Quebec. And uh, I had trialed under her with Lido when Lido was a young dog, when I think he was like maybe two. And she had lovely things to say about him then. And then when I got my GMOCH, it was there was no fanfare. It was done on a Friday. It was very quiet at the show venue. And um, we got our double our double cue that we needed. And as she handed me the the ribbon, and I believe, did, I don't think I got high in trial that day. I can't remember back, but um, I, she handed me the ribbon and she goes, anything special? And I said, actually, we just got our GMOCH today. Well, I mean, that's a huge thing for that to happen. And and my friends, unfortunately, couldn't be there because it was a work day. And so I humbly went back to my phone and I texted my friends and I said, we just got our GMOCH. And then they showed up that evening and surprised me outside my house. We had to, they had videotaped it. And I mean, I was shocked. I was in my pajamas, actually. So it was quite something at the time. And I, it was overwhelming. I mean, I've never had a GMOCH dog and, and I never thought I would. And yet here it was. And it was kind of like uneventful. And, you know, it happened. And I thought, wow, I. I don't know what I expected. Did I expect fireworks or, or what to happen? But I was absolutely blown away. And I can never recreate that moment ever again. It was phenomenal. Your first GMOCH, I think, is something you will remember for the rest of your life. Because it's so hard to get. Like, oh, I wish people understood how hard it is oh, to get a GMOCH. I've got an idea. How yeah, it is. it's so hard. <laughs> oh my goodness. It's so great. It's so great to see you have such passion about your sport. If you were to talk to someone new and they're just getting into competitive obedience, is there any bit of advice you would give them? Like, you know, you've had such wonderful experiences in the obedience ring and with obedience friends who've become like family in right. your region as well. Is there any advice you would give someone who's considering getting into it or is just starting getting into it? Well, I, I think what people need to remember is, is that the sky's the limit. You set that limit for you and your dog. I mean, you have to start out with the right dog. But I think the key is, is you have to have that, that foundation of the sense of a village building your dog in you. And so you have to have exceptional instructors. And I am so fortunate to have probably two of the top instructors in all of Canada happen to be right here in Calgary. And maybe I'm just saying that and I feel, and but I do think that anyone who's taken classes from these two individuals would know how exceptional they are. And I have taken classes with them for ooh, over 15 years with all various at dogs that I've had over the years. And they have helped me make the dogs that I have to this day. Um, as well, I have a really great core of uh, trainers at, at, who are also friends and we meet with on a weekly basis. So I think anybody getting into the sport has to find an exceptional instructor that will get them to where they need to be. Because competitive obedience is very different from regular obedience. Um, you need to have a picture in mind as to what you want your, your routine to look like and how you want you and your dog to perform. And I've had a picture of how I wanted that to be since I was very young. And um, I think people just need to understand that you must get in with the right instructors you have to have a good dog and you have to believe in your teamwork. It's, it is a teamwork. Uh, you know, as much as Lido is exceptional at doing what he does, I'm the one who, who drives the ship. So he also in the same breath, he has to listen to me and we control this kind of dance we do when we're out there um, doing obedience. And if you watch a really great obedience routine, to me, it is like a dance. And it's a well choreographed dance that that moves so smoothly. It's a, just those there's those teams out there that you just stand outside the ring and you go, wow, that was phenomenal. And now you may not they may not cue every single time, but their performance is exceptional. You know, uh, dogs make effort errors all the time. They're dogs, you know. Um, and I never faulted Lito when he makes an effort error. He's he always tries for me. He rarely. I can't even think on one hand 
basketball, maybe maybe a couple of times where he might have just, you know, associated for me for a second, which caused him to miss a signal or something like that. But all in all, uh, I would love to see more people get into the sport of obedience. It's, it, it, it seems to be a bit of a dying sport, unfortunately. We need to get more youth involved. So, uh, you know, the junior program's got to come up and, and hopefully we'll see a lot more younger people coming in with their working teams. I'd, I hope it, it will continue to flourish. It's such a fabulous sport. Um, draft work used to be my thing and hurting and I would tell everyone to do it, but I got bit by the obedience bug and I'm telling you, it's a fabulous sport. People just will give it a chance and try more than just a CD, like move on and know that your dog can do utility or, or something like that. It's scary. Don't get me wrong. Uh, I still get butterflies every time I get in the ring and I have a really great dog that makes it look easy, but it's not, it's certainly not easy or we'd all be doing it. You know, you'd see 50 utility entries as opposed to 10, you know, that kind of thing. But I really hope that more people will get involved in the sport, but it takes, it takes, um, I think it would take the more experienced people also to mentor. We got to start a little bit of mentorship with respect to the new groups that are coming in and, and, and let them know that it is a welcoming environment. I know a lot of people get intimidated by it, right? Cause it's, um, you know, they're like, Oh, I don't think I could ever have a dog that could do that, but you can, you honestly, you can, if I can do it, you, anybody can do it really. Oh, it's so wonderful to hear that and to hear from you, Gwen. Congratulations on such a massive accomplishment. Lido, the number one obedience dog in 2021. We are wishing you and Lido all the very best. And uh, we don't think we've seen the last of you guys. I think you're going to keep going and doing more stuff and keep wowing us. So congratulations. I hope so. <laughs> We're trying. It's, it's, you know, it's like I said, it's a tough, it's a tough obedience country we live in we have exceptional teams and i'm just honored to just be in the top you know to be number one is is a dream but you know maintaining that is really hard around here so i wish all my friends and fellow competitors the best of luck this year it's um it'll be another great year i hope that there'll be a lot more new faces and a and you'll see some maybe some different top 10 dogs this year but it's so great to see such different breeds up there you know it's like you said it's not just the golden retrievers and the border collies like you got to watch out for those other off breeds. They're coming. They're coming for you, Golden. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Have a, thank you so much. Glenn, this was wonderful. Thank you so oh, much. Thanks, Ian. Thanks. Did I you... really appreciate it. Thanks so much.